Welcome to our online worship service for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. It's the 22nd of August. Let's begin with our acknowledgement to country. The Lutheran Church of Australia acknowledges that our loving creator God first gave the land on which we are placed to the peoples of the First Nations who have walked and cared for this land since before recorded time. At Holy Cross, we particularly acknowledge the Ngunnawal people. We thank God for the land's traditional custodians and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging as we travel this journey of reconciliation in Australia. Jesus said, the spirit is the one that gives life. Human strength can do nothing. The words that I have spoken to you from that life-giving spirit. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, let us bring our lives to the one who offers us mercy. Watcher of the faithful, we could put on the comfortable shirt of faith, but prefer fear with its frayed cuffs and stains on the front. We could slip on the loafers of peace, but squeeze into the size too small, stiff dress shoes of anger. We could wrap truth around our lives, yet continue to punch holes in the belt of falsehood so it always fits. Hear us, faithful heart, and rescue us from our worst selves. When we are lonely, you offer us your heart as a refuge. When we are broken, you knit us back together. When we are afraid, you promise to draw us into your embrace. When we are faithless, you continue to call us to follow Jesus, the Christ. The only word we need in the midst of so many hollow promises. Amen. As God listens to our voices and hearts, our brokenness is gathered up. And we are made whole as mercy and life fill our lives. By the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are clothed with grace and peace. So go and serve as God's people. The reading comes from John chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. The living Father sent him, and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven isn't like what your ancestors ate. They died, but whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus was teaching in a synagogue in Capernaum when he said these things. Many of Jesus' disciples heard him and said, this is too hard for anyone to understand. Jesus knew that his disciples were grumbling. So he asked, does this bother you? What if you should see the son of man go up to heaven where he came from? The spirit is the one who gives life. Human strength can do nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are from that life-giving spirit. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning, he knew who would have faith in him. He also knew which one would betray him. 
Then Jesus said, You cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. That is why I have told these things to all of you. Because of what Jesus said, many of his disciples turned their backs on him and stopped following him. Jesus then asked his twelve disciples if they were also going to leave him. Simon Peter answered, Lord, there is no one else we can go to. Your words give eternal life. We have faith in you, and we are sure that you are God's Holy One. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about battles. The whole world is currently engaged in a battle. Do you know what this battle is? It's against an invisible enemy. We are in a battle with coronavirus. Coronavirus is so small that scientists need to use microscopes to see it. But even though we can't see coronavirus with our eyes, we know it exists because we can see the damage it causes. People get sick from coronavirus. But we have defences and weapons we can use to fight coronavirus. What defences and weapons do we have? To try and stop the spread of coronavirus, we have masks. I wonder if you can recognise any of the faces behind these masks. We also have sanitizer, physical distancing and lockdowns, and vaccines. We also have health professionals and hospitals to help those who get sick. We are fighting another invisible battle. The New Testament reading set for this week is from Ephesians chapter 6. Here Paul is talking about an invisible spiritual battle. This battle takes place inside our heart and spirit. The enemy is the devil. Just like we have weapons and defences against the invisible coronavirus, we also have weapons and defences against the devil. Paul calls this the armour of God. What is in this armour? Whoa, that was too fast. Let's slow it down. The first one, belt of truth. The devil is a liar, so keep looking to the truth. The truth is that God is stronger than the devil and sin and death. The truth is that God loves you and forgives you. Next, the breastplate of righteousness. In our baptism, we have been clothed with Christ's righteousness, so the devil cannot accuse us of our sins. The third item, feet ready to share the gospel of peace. This reminds me that the armour of God is not just for our own protection, but to help others who are in the battle. Who needs you to share the gospel of peace with them? How can we do this? In lockdown, this might mean a phone call or video chat or message. The fourth item is the shield of faith. In Roman times, shields were covered with a layer of leather which could be soaked in water to put out arrows of fire. The shield of faith can help to put out the devil's arrows. The fifth item, the helmet of salvation. We can calm our thoughts with the promise of heaven and the ultimate victory we have through Jesus. The sixth thing, sword of the spirit, which is the Bible. The Holy Spirit works through the Bible, baptism and Holy Communion to strengthen and keep us in faith. Jesus used God's word when he was attacked by the devil. How can we sharpen our swords by the Bible? We can read it, think about it, hear it preached, sing it, talk about it and memorise it. Paul encourages us to keep on praying as well. The reality is we are facing many battles. But the good news is that we have the armour of God to help. And the great news is that Jesus has won the final victory for us through his death and resurrection. May God's peace be with you. And just like every good news segment, I'll finish with some cute animal pictures.
Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're entering our second week of lockdown. After the initial surprise and uh, the flurry of activity to prepare for isolation, the frustration of enduring lockdown again sets in. Some express anger. In the ACT, we had over 400 days without lockdown, with no virus in our community. What went wrong? We thought our political leaders had things under control, but they didn't. Many people are simply giving up on them, retreating back to more primitive notions, perhaps even mad conspiracy theories. And the broad group of disciples in our gospel reading this morning, perhaps younger students, were, simply, were thinking similarly about Jesus. At the beginning of chapter 6, from where our gospel reading uh, comes, the people following Jesus saw him as a hero. He had fed 5,000 of them. He seemed to be such a breath of fresh air. He enjoyed the company of common folk. He even went to their weddings. He spoke with authority. He spoke of the good life with him. And he assured those who followed him that they would share in that life. So what went wrong? Why did the people leave him? Why couldn't they stay loyal to him? Why did one of the 12 disciples, one of his inner circle, eventually betray him? Well, I began my reflection this morning by reflecting on our current situation our second lockdown. Some of us find it difficult to trust, particularly to trust those who are leaders and in authority. And since the Royal Commission into Institutional Abuse, many people find it hard to trust religious leaders. It's difficult to trust anything political and faith leaders say and do uh, that. It's difficult to trust anything political and faith leaders say and do to have confidence in what they will do um, and what they say. Jesus seems to be experiencing a similar, similar lack of trust, doesn't he? Some of the people following Jesus found what he had to say too hard, too hard to accept. They simply weren't prepared to trust. And so they went back to doing what they used to do, what was safe, to where the rest of their families found their faith, the old-time religion of the Torah, the law, as they'd been taught it. The traditional bread was from heaven. It might have been fairly ordinary, but it was okay. True, their ancestors all died despite eating that bread. It didn't give them eternal life. But the bread that Jesus was offering, oh, that seemed very hard to swallow. What didn't they like about the taste of Jesus' bread? Well, first, Jesus talked about his followers sharing his flesh and blood and finding life in that communion. His bread was made from his own flesh and blood. And second, he said that his flesh and blood comes from God. None of this went down very well. And this must have been very challenging to swallow. No one up to that time had heard of the Eucharist or Holy Communion. And Jesus bled our blood and flesh in and with and under the wine and bread as we know of it today. It sounded too much like cannibalism, I think. Even the early Christian communities found this Christian teaching of Jesus very challenging. I think that's why the Gospel of John is giving this teaching so much stress and emphasis, particularly in this chapter of ours. Oh, but we think we understand it today, don't we? We've got it. We understand it. 
But actually, it really remains a mystery, even for us. How can flesh and blood come down from heaven? How can God's spirit breathe life into ordinary bread and wine and produce new life? If we're honest, we have to admit too that it's pretty difficult to swallow. So where does that leave us? If it is so hard to accept, will we also go away? And if we do, where will we find the words of eternal life? Oh, I know there are a good many people who claim to have words offering a better life, a good life, even eternal life. But, or do we say with Peter, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the, own, are the Holy One of God. Peter, at that time at least, believes and knows that the only words that come from the source of life can give life, authentic life, full life, eternal life. And those words come from Jesus. Jesus speaks to us today as he did to his disciples. Stay with me. Abide with me. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the source of life except through me. Not through your ancestors or your church tradition or your correct doctrine. Just believe me, trust me and what my words promise. It's that spirit, uh, that life and that word which, or who is the living bread for us this morning, broken for us. The word that gives us life, spirit life, God's life, eternal life. God's spirit breathes into it our flesh and blood bodies gives us new life now and it will raise us up on the last day. I know it's sad that we cannot celebrate communion now as we hear these words of Jesus. But even in our isolation, we can still hear and believe that Jesus Christ has the words of eternal life. And as we continue to walk with him, we too have become heirs of that eternal life. So let us stay loyal to our Lord who has the words of eternal life. Like Peter, let us cling to Jesus' words of eternal life even as we struggle to understand them and put them into practice. Let's walk with him, assured of his promise that he will abide with us. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. You are our one and only. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Defender God, in a world that selfishly lives for the moment, without thought for whatever damage we may be causing for the future, this pandemic has only added to the chaos. Lockdowns, shortages, hesitancy, isolation, loss, and even death. After 18 months of this craziness, the conspiracy theorists and protesters abound. Self-interest is rife with people wanting to do their own thing willfully risking the health of those around them. Now more than ever, we need to remember your gift, the sure commitment of your armour, our defence and protection. Help us to remember to put your full armour on every day. With the belt of truth, your truth will rule in our hearts and minds and be on our lips. With the breastplate of righteousness, you will protect our hearts from the temptation of every day. With feet fitted for the readiness that comes with the gospel, our words and actions will be a reflection of you, drawing others closer to you. With the shield of faith, 
Our belief and trust in you extinguishes the pain of trials and tribulations. With the helmet of salvation, nothing will separate us from your love and grace. With the sword of the Spirit, your word is our weapon to demolish strongholds of error and falsehood. Most important of all, remind us to use the power of prayer. Help us to be joyful and to give thanks in everything, to lay our troubles, cares and concerns with you. Confident that whatever your answer is, it will be according to your timing and your perfect will. Defender God, in you we will never be alone. In you we have everything we need and we can weather any storm. Your grace, peace and love be with us all. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go out 
and make known the mystery of the gospel. Keep alert and pray at all times. Draw strength from God's power and so stand firm against all that would corrupt you. And may God arm you with truth and righteousness. May Christ Jesus give you words of spirit and life. And may the Holy Spirit draw you, draw you near to God's presence and bless you with honour and grace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.